I told people in the Cute Conservatives Facebook group that I thought Kat Von D had an aha moment and is a conservative now, and some of you refused to believe me. Well, the evidence is scorching. Her son is literally wearing a Turning Point USA hat. Court adjourned, don't underestimate me. I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. Oh, the juicy stories I have for you today. They're fresh squeeze, the kind you've come to know and love. And they mostly all lean on the political side. This rarely happens, but I'm excited because when it does, it's like a little treat. And then the show feels kind of podcasty. Put some respect on my name. You understand me? When y'all saying my name, put some respect on it. I have a story for you about a sorority punishing a girl after she made conservative posts on social media, black artists going viral for depicting violence against white people, a little pop culture fix with some TV news, and what happened after a conservative teacher dared to show PragerU videos in her classroom. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. <laughs> I love how every sorority I know preaches women empowerment and girls supporting girls until one of them comes out as conservative. Then all that talk evaporates and they attack like vipers. at the University of Kansas, Katherine Lauer, has been placed on probation by her sorority for sharing conservative posts on social media that Kappa Alpha Theta called unbecoming. Past instances in which I profess to like you were fraudulent. You know what she shared that was so bad that she had to take a one week social media posting holiday to do a personal reflection and cleanse and they wanted her to watch a video picked by the sorority's diversity, equity and inclusion committee. It was a video from Candace Owens where Candace states, Black Lives Matter is an organization of white men using the faces of dead black people to raise millions of dollars towards electing white liberals into positions of power. Catherine was then ordered to have an open dialogue with the chief operating officer of her sorority to get a broader education of America today. Many educated people are quite stupid. These are not really your sisters if they don't believe you should think for yourself. And where are your other sisters who do agree with you? Why aren't they coming to your defense? Deep down, some of them have to know this isn't right. You didn't exactly stand up for me. Donors of the University of Kansas, you need to be aware of this. If you're an alumni of this sorority, you need to be aware of this too. And if you or someone you know gives money to any university or program that discriminates and actively participates in attempting to punish conservative students so that they'll forfeit their right to freedom of thought, hit them where it hurts the most, their wallets. Time's up. I want my money. We have an entire program for this at Turning Point USA. It's called Divest You. This is how you enact change on your campus. Draw national attention to this kind of crap and then let alumni know before they write the check what they're actually funding. And if any of you know Catherine, you better tell her we have a way better sorority that won't cancel her and it's called Cute Servatives. We should start our own sorority. <gasps> Where's the artsy fartsy cute servatives at? Don't do it, Alex. Don't. <gasps> you need to get your hands on at least $14,000 because there is a super rare Andy Warhol piece depicting Jackie Onassis in the moments right before JFK was killed for sale called Jackie I, and it's like the coolest cute servative collector's item I've ever seen. Did you say cat turd? Collector. Bidding starts at 14K and it's sad, beautiful, and haunting. Like me when I have crumbs stuck in my bra. It's that little crumb snatcher. Before I get to the not so good art news, do me a huge favor, double tap the heart on this episode real quick. Thank you. No, oh, there's art. This is art. Feast your eyes on this absolutely disgusting social justice art that's going viral. It's from an Instagram with over 225,000 followers, I might add, called Support Black Art. And the page promotes pictures like this that depict black people holding the decapitated heads of white people or stepping on the corpses of white people. It's incredibly racist. It's super racist. Just Author Jordan Peterson, who I know a lot of you love, once asked, everyone knows when the right has gone too far, but how do we know when the left has gone too far? And I think the answer to that question has become clearer and clearer since March. You're insane. 
some TBT action, you know what these pics remind me of? A little artist who happened to be the one selected by a certain former president, Barack Obama, to paint his White House portrait. Remember the one of him hiding in the leaves? A perfect hiding spot. The artist who painted that picture also painted black women holding the severed heads of white people. That seems pretty straightforward. I know this much, I would feel deeply uncomfortable if the races were reversed and it was a white person holding the head of a black person. I can't imagine celebrating a representation of actual brutal violence and hatred like this. Of course, I'm sure this work of artistic expression won't get taken down for hate speech on Instagram. They're hypocrites. Isn't it amazing how these anti-racist BLM groups hold the exact bigoted beliefs they claim to oppose? It's all a scam. TV time! Out of here! I love TV. Something coming. There are two shows that really caught my eye that I wanted to tell you about. Both happen to be on Netflix. I know, I know, don't at me. The first one is the upcoming season of The Crown. They lived happily ever after. A lot of conservatives have told me that you like the show, so I had to talk about this tea involving Dominic West because it's boiling. The next season of the show is supposed to cover Princess Diana, and Dominic is going to portray Prince Charles. Here is the stuff of which fairy tales are made. Prince and princess on their wedding day. The irony is, a few weeks ago, he was spotted kissing and canoodling Downton Abbey star Lily James completely out in the open, even though he's married. His wife saw the pictures at the same time we did in the tabloids. Him and his wife released a statement saying that they're happily married, but everyone was totally skeezed out, including me. Of course, the character he's playing, Prince Charles, famously cheated on Princess Diana with his current wife, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, and she cheated on her husband. Life imitates art, I guess, and vice versa. No one told you yet you're a genius and an artist. Let me be the first. The other news is about a new show coming to Netflix that sounds right up my spoopy alley. It stars Jamie Foxx and it's a vampire thriller called Day Shift. I would look so slingy and cool as a vampire. According to Netflix, Jamie Foxx's character is a hardworking blue collar dad who just wants to provide a good life for his quick witted eight year old daughter. His mundane San Fernando Valley pool cleaning job is a front for his real source of income, hunting and killing vampires. Psychic vampires stealing the energy from the kids. Does that sound like it's gonna suck you in or what? <laughs> A high school teacher in Ohio is being accused of indoctrination for showing her 10th grade students PragerU videos. Oh, that's a shame. A mom of one of the girls in the class was not happy and the school eventually gave in and had the teacher take it off her syllabus. Well, be careful. You don't want to slip into a double standard here. Now, you probably already know what it's like to be a conservative growing up in school, having to listen to leftist crap every single day. And if we raise a concern, nothing is ever done. We just have to live with it. This girl and her mom say one thing and immediately the school caves. <laughs> I'll do anything. I'll be a good boy. <laughs> I'll be a good boy. Here's the thing. No matter what, your kid is being taught with a bias at school, by you, by friends, at church, anywhere they go. The question for parents is, what do you want them learning? And are you challenging them to think critically? That's a good question. Matt Walsh from The Daily Wire brought this up on Twitter and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. He said, there is no such thing as some mythical objective education with no worldview or value system attached. Everyone has an agenda. I know I do. When I have kids one day, I don't want them to be taught that they're perpetual victims, that America is an inherently racist and evil place, or that there's 852 genders because none of that is true. Well, I'm not gonna lie to the kid. Most importantly, whoever the cute conservative teacher is that has been showing PragerU videos for the last two years, you're a real one. Protect them at all costs. Anybody else have a problem with that? What did you think about us putting the latics in Poplitics today? Today's episode is a really good one to share the podcast version of. Subscribe to Poplitics on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and more. Leave us a five-star review. There's a lot to discuss in the comments today. Let me know if you're currently in a sorority or you used to be, and if you think they're a lost cause to the left now. And also let me know if you think it's okay for that teacher in Ohio to play Prager U videos in the class or not. If you love Poplitics, the biggest way that you can support us is to share this to your story 
and DM the episode to two friends. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, and I'm going to be breaking down my top five favorite political scandals. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. Click below to watch yesterday's episode. Please subscribe, thumbs up, share this video, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss the conservatee. And make sure you're following this show at Poplitics on Instagram for even more conservative content.